Let's get into our next discussion. Now, the Supreme Court has dismissed all charges of false assets declaration against the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, saying that all evidence presented by the prosecution were mere hearsay. A five-man panel of the Apex Court, led by Justice Santos Umweza, uh, ruled that the judgment of the Court of Appeal ordering the Senate President back uh, to the CCT to defend himself on three out of the 18 count charges preferred against him was given in error since it was clear that the case of the prosecution was predicated on hearsay. Now, the Supreme Court agreed that vital witnesses who have issues raised against Saraki were not called uh, by the prosecution to testify in the trial. And so Justice Mweza held that the four witnesses tendered documentary evidence that were not made by them. Hence, the evidence and the oral evidence ended up as Hearsay. All right. Now, the Supreme Court <laughs> held that hearsay evidence has no probative value and can't be relied upon to convict anybody or be used to establish a prima facie case against any Nigerian citizen. You, you, heard, down, you down, heard the judgment. Down, down a bit. I just want to say that we are grateful to God. We are grateful to the Supreme Court. This matter is over. Let there be peace in our country. Thank you very much. That is the judgment of the Supreme Court. What do you want me to say against the judgment of the Supreme Court? It's binding up of, of on everyone. So that's, that is the decision of the Supreme Court. It's binding, it's the final. It's the decision of the Apex Court. And uh, we can't just, we, we must, whether you like it or not, you must abide by it. Well, the, you all listen to the judgment of the court. Um, that is the decision of the Apex Court. And being decision of the APS court is biding on everyone. It's biding on me, it's biding on my clients, it's biding on, 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 on everyone. So uh, the question whether, whether I'm satisfied, it's not, it's not the question of my own satisfaction. Well, Saraki says he's satisfied with the ruling of the Supreme Court, which struck out his trial at the uh, CCT, that's a Code of Conduct Tribunal. Yeah. Now, in a statement personally signed by him, Saraki expressed gratitude to all Nigerians who have supported him since the case commenced three years ago, thanking the judiciary for doing what is right. Mm -hmm. All right, joining us is a lawyer, Inibe Ifyong. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you. Okay. Nice yeah. Well, the Supreme Court has spoken. Um, did you see this coming? Is this another case of the uh, prosecution bungling its own case, not being thorough? And so it was easy for the Supreme Court to say all of the evidence that you have was actually based on hearsay and nothing else. I, I want to start my conversation on this mm. issue by saying that nobody is above the law. And when the allegations of criminality, of corruption against an individual, mm. and that individual does not enjoy immunity under Section 308 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. is liable to be prosecuted. The federal government, through the Attorney General of the Federation, by virtue of Section 174 of the Constitution, the AGF has the prosecutorial discretion to determine who to charge and who not to charge in determining whether to charge somebody for a criminal offense, some factors are usually taken into consideration. Namely, mm -hmm. are there evidence to warrant the arraignment of the person? What is the credibility of the evidence? Mm -hmm. Is there likelihood of success? These are factors that a prosecutor that is what he sought Should would ordinarily that. take into cognizance to avoid embarrassment in court. Throughout the trial of the Senate President, from September 2015, mm. when he was arraigned, 20, September 22nd, 2015, when he was arraigned before the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Nigerians followed the proceedings. At a point, it became quite dramatic. Yes. Sometimes, mm -hmm. we even questioned whether really this was a case of serious and legitimate prosecution or a dramatic display. It was intriguing indeed. Again, 
what has happened? The CCT discharged the Senate president mm -hmm. on all the counts, the 18 counts prevailed yes. against him. Yeah. The Senate president, of course, was aggrieved. Sorry, was satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. The federal government was aggrieved. The federal government appealed to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal said no, that the CCT was right, except for three counts. counts. Therefore, 15 counts Where? were struck out. Mm -hmm. The Senate president was asked to return to the CCT to face charges on three counts. On three counts. Hmm. Of course, the Senate president was dissatisfied. The federal government was also dissatisfied. The federal government appealed to the Supreme Court. The Senate president cross-appealed to the Supreme Court. Hmm. And you have now seen what has happened. Interestingly, one thing has been proven, that there has been consistency from the CCT to the Court so, of Appeal hmm. to the so Supreme, the Supreme Court, Court, that the trial of the Senate president was bereft of evidential value. What we are saying is that, in essence, is that when facts, there are findings of facts, by a trial court. An appellate court ordinarily cannot interfere with findings of facts, mm. except you prove that those findings were pervasive and are grounds in law for doing so. Mm. Why am I making this point? When you see a consistent decision by the court, from the CCT so to the court of appeal to the Supreme Court, yeah. it cannot be a case of corruption. Something must have gone wrong with the trial, with the prosecution. What do you think went wrong then? Evidence. Because according to Saraki, this was really just uh, politically uh, politi motivated. From the beginning. From well, the get-go. I, I would not rule that out, but some of us are more interested in the merits of the case. Yeah. Okay. We are not carried away, we are not seduced by argument that this is because he emerged the Senate president against the wishes of his party. Mm -hmm. What we are interested in is the facts and the merits of his case. Interestingly, again, you can clearly see that what the federal government did, the prosecution did in this case, was not tenable. How do you call four witnesses, tender mm -hmm. about 36 exhibits, and you did not call any witness that speaks directly to, to the, the document that mm -hmm. you tender? Mm -hmm. By virtue of Section 82 of the Evidence Act, yeah. documents are only admissible when they are relevant. You cannot speak to a document whose existence you have no knowledge of. Mm -hmm. These are findings that were made at the CCT, at the Court of Appeal, and by the Supreme Court. Okay. So I, I, I believe that no matter how you look at it, no matter the grievance uh, we have about the, 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 the Syracuse leadership mm -hmm. and some of the issues, the infractions we have seen under, under the present leadership of the Senate, clearly law supersedes sentiments. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you said earlier on that any lawyer worth his salt, when you see a case concerning on all the evidence, you should know where the case yes. should go. Exactly. Now, there were senior advocates of Nigeria involved on both sides mm -hmm. of, this, of this case. And when evidence, the first and second and third evidence were brought, shouldn't they have seen to know that this case, or it should, it should have advised government to say, no, there is no evidence enough to, to take this case anywhere. That's because we're, we're looking at the judiciary now, knowing that going forward, as far as we all know, that this case will not go anywhere. Why this is important, the point you have made, or the mm. question you have put forward, is that millions of taxpayers' funds have Went been dispensed exactly. for this trial, mm -hmm, of course, mm -hmm. to procure witnesses, mm. to pay the prosecutors, mm. to even the proceedings that the CCT. You even saw the intricacies that at a point, the Senate president had to bring an interlocutor appeal, mm. which was fought up to the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, the charges against the president, the Senate president, relates to infractions and this alleged anticipatory declaration of assets when he was governor of Quara, of Quara, Quara State, mm. as far back as 2003. Mm. So you clearly see that the antecedents of this case is not something that happened a few years back. But again, how come that the prosecution in this case did not see anything wrong in the way they were going about with this case? But importantly, it is important for the AGF to call an in-house meeting, a house cleaning meeting, a post-judgment conference to say, this is the decision of the Supreme Court. What could we have done better to avert this kind of situation in subsequent yeah, cases? Yeah, but unfortunately, the same situation has played itself out over and over and over again, where uh, the court decides, look, prosecution has been wishy-washy about its own 
its own case. Mm. And so there is no case to answer, whether in the case of Saraki or any others that, you know, we can't even begin to mention. Of course, the Supreme Court actually described this as a, a judicial equivalent of a forensic uh, somersault. I, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to put it on It's, it's always a very, beautiful very when they come yes, up with very those terms. And like you said, you know, the prosecution actually failed to call those who have direct Martin knowledge mm. of the facts sought, you know, uh, to be proved by, uh, to uh, testify in this case. So now that the Supreme Court has sealed this matter, what's next? Nothing next. They cannot appeal to God. The, vision, mm. the finality of determination of the visions of the Supreme Court, mm. when the highest court of the land has given a pronouncement, as the Minister of Justice and as the Nigeria, you can only say the court places because that is the law. But what I am saying is that the federal government needs to look inwards. Mm -hmm. We can't just blame all this on the judiciary. We need to look at the capacity of our prosecutors. We need to ask legitimate questions. How come that material witnesses were not called in this case? Was it deliberate? Was mm -hmm. it a clear attempt not to do what was right? Again, how come we are saying this? Look at even the case of the BVN. Mm. Yeah. That the federal government went to court to seize funds in account not linked to BVM. They lost because they did not comply with due process. So you can clearly see that there is deficiency in the prosecution and the administration of justice at the level of the federal government. These kind of cases can be adverted if due process is full. I am only advising. Would you say that the, uh, the judiciary has given a good account of itself based on this Saraki uh, case and the cases even before? The previous even cases, the previous cases, maybe cases even Tinubu case? Yes. As it was, it, Indeed, because no, they, they, they are similar yes, we cases. Have to. Yeah. You know, there is no doubt about the fact mm. and the pressure that there are indeed issues with the judiciary. But to fairness of the judiciary and the Supreme Court, you have seen cases where the, the judiciary has convicted persons. Look at like the former two governors, Joshua Darie and, and Jolin Yame, who have yeah. been convicted. Mm -hmm. All of us were present in the judiciary. But when evidence is not before the court, the court cannot manufacture evidence. Mm. That is why the federal government needs to look in what's and be able to determine cases that deserve merit, cases that are worth prosecution. If their prosecutors need training, they should be given training. Mm. You can't all blame all this on the court. Again, people are saying, well, this is politics. I don't want to look at it from a partisan or from a political perspective. Mm. Let us look at it purely on the perspective of law, that the federal government prosecuted the Senate president knowing ab initio that there were defects with the proceedings, and they took no steps to correct them. Mm. They, they thought the Supreme Court could have done. There's nothing the Supreme Court could have done because if the CCT says it's not guilty, the Court of Appeals said it's not guilty except for three, charge, three counts, and the Supreme Court said no. Again, interestingly, the Supreme Court made a finding that even the Court of Appeal agreed that the evidence against the Senate President was hearsay. Yes, How do you now rely on hearsay to say you should go and face charges on three counts? So indeed, you, the, 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 the Supreme Court is on, vindicated. On the same evidence. Exactly. The same evidence that was used to prosecute the 18 uh, counts charges exactly so I, I am saying that i am saying again it is also an opportunity to call for law reform we need to re-examine our criminal justice system and our law we need to determine when burden of proof should shift and who burden of proof should be vested in certain cases where a person is alleged not to have declared his asset we need to ask some questions because under currently the constitution says that Matters pertaining to asset declaration mm -hmm. goes to CCT. Again, how do you even have access to record of asset declaration? Mm. The Constitution of the National Assembly should, by law, give Nigerians access to assets of public officials. To date, the National Assembly has failed to enact a law. Why am I making this point? Yes. Because if we have a law on access to asset declared by public officials, the case of Sarah King would have been simpler. Because even Nigerians, even people from Kwara, mm. would have been interested in knowing the asset of the Senate President. But as a Nigerian today, you don't have access to that. So we need to review our law. We need to also determine okay. the circumstance in which the prosecution should be set. All right. We have the burden of proof okay. on them by law. Let's, 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 um, let, let's leave it here for now, but we'll, we'll keep you and then we go on a break. Uh, we'll come back to round off on this uh, topic. Now, let's, let's take a break and the top of the hour will be time for us to bring you the news update and then we come back to round off on this topic we're discussing now. Stay with us on TBC Breakfast.
we still have uh, joining us Eni Behe Efiong with us in studio, a lawyer. And we've been talking about the uh, trial, if you, if you would say, mm -hmm. about the, the ruling of the Supreme Court on the cases brought against the Senate President, yes. uh, Dr. Bukola Saraki. You know, in, in his response, uh, of, that's uh, Senator Senate Saraki. President, of mm. course, uh, Bukola Saraki, he actually pointed to that issue that you raised earlier, but I, w I would want you to uh, even expand it a little further. Because he said that, look, the federal government failed to do a cost-benefit analysis of the case. And if you knew that you were not going to be thorough with the case in terms of ensuring that you have a smoking gun, why bother prosecute this case in the first place? Which is the point uh, I had made at the beginning of my intervention yes. on this matter, that every prosecutor, what he sought, before you determine to exercise your prosecutorial discretion, mm. to arrest somebody, to charge somebody to court, you have to look at the evidence that you have. You have to sit back and reflect. Can I, in all honesty, secure conviction? Mm -hmm. Again, what is my strategy? Who are the witnesses that I'm going to call? Are they relevant witnesses? What is the evidential value of documentary evidence that I intend to rely on? Yeah. These are considerations that you must advert to. And I strongly believe this was not done. If this was done, taxpayers' money wouldn't have been dissipated. In that case, the Senate president has, has he kept saying it. And he says that, well, th this whole prosecution is just because I emerged as a Senate yeah. president. And mm. he's political. It, would you say that he has been vindicated? As he far has as been vindicated. <laughs> it's mm. not about my opinion. That is the law. The Speaker court has said so. Mm. Mm. The Supreme Court has vindicated the Senate president. I'm not saying hierarchy is the Senate. Mm. The point is, did you have facts? Did you have evidence to prosecute it? Yeah. Some of us had issues with some aspects of the divisions of the CCT. But again, the Supreme Court has clarified all this. To say that you couldn't have relied on these exhibits you tendered. Because the witness, just let me give you one point. The case of the Senate president was investigated largely by the EFCC. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Code of Conduct Bureau is a constitutional body that has the power to investigate matters related to assets. So this case was bundled up ab initio. That wow. you have the EFCC going to investigate matters relating to assets. Whereas the Code of Conduct Bureau is there. And you had the material witness, Watkins. A personnel of the EFCC, not even of the Code of Conduct Bureau. Hmm. The court was not blind to this. The attention of the court was invited hmm. to these matters. And they caught two cognizants of them that this wasn't a case of serious prosecution. Okay, now let's look at this executive bill that uh, Mr. President has just signed into law uh, to actually uh, confiscate assets mm. linked Suspected. to, uh, yeah, mm. to um, you know, corrupt uh, enrichment. Mm. Now let's even assume that this law actually had been in place before now, and Saraki's. Uh, you know, assets had been seized and what have you. Because some of your colleagues, lawyers like yourself, have been saying this executive bill is not constitutional. I, I that it's not something that uh, should be allowed to, uh, you know. I share that okay. opinion. But just to clarify, it is yes. not a bill. It is actually an executive order. Yes. Again, oh, yeah, thank it, you. It, it no, worries yeah. me. Executive order, yeah. I don't want to question the competence mm -hmm. of the current Attorney General of the Federation. But if you look at the legal defeats, the constitutional aberration, the mistakes, avoidable errors that this government has made in legal issues. One is tempted to ask, who is advising Mr. President on legal issues? How do you issue an executive order mm -hmm. over a matter that the National Assembly has already made sufficient provisions of the law? But the, the president law. has a deputy who is a professor of law that and a senior advocate of Nigeria. <clears throat> the vice president is a senior advocate of Nigeria and a professor of law. That executive order, I'm very confident, will be validated by the court. Let me give you two reasons. Mm -hmm. The first is that the executive order seems to be an attempt to bypass the judicial process. It is a judicial, the judicial that has the power to make determination of guilt. You cannot touch the asset of any Nigerian, the property of any Nigerian, without resort to court. Mm -hmm. The right to acquire property is a conditional right protected by section 43, section 44 of the Constitution. If the president feels that assets of criminal suspects are under threat of dissipation. Yeah. Why not make application to court? They are under ample provisions under the ECC Act, the ICPC Act, mm -hmm. the Money Laundering Act, and so on. 
on entry forfeiture. We have seen that in the husband tower Ish. where some monies were seized. Yeah. Mm. We have seen that in the, Ish, the case of the former Minister of Petroleum, the Zani Alice mm. Mm. We have seen that in the case of the wife of the former president, mm. patient, patient Jonathan. Jonathan. So yeah. this is not new. Why do you need an executive order? If you feel the law is not sufficient, mm. which I agree, there is the process of crime bill 2017 before the National Assembly. Is that pressure on them to pass it? But you cannot, by executive order, assume the functions of the National All Assembly. Right. All right. You even claim that violation of the order is a crime. Mm -hmm. That is not possible mm -hmm. because by virtue of Section 36 sub 12 of the Constitution, a, an act is only a crime if it is prescribed it is. by written law. By so there are so many reasons. I've written an opinion of this to say that this, this order is unconstitutional. But I'm also advising, Mr. President, that if you have for the remaining part of your administration, why not look beyond the people advising you? Get a crack team. Get a set of intellectuals, mm -hmm. people that are not partisan, to advise you, a think tank, a legal think tank, to advise you on some of these issues. Well, the fact All is, right. it is possible too that his, um, the senior advocates around him do advise him. Is he taking that? Well, that another, <laughs> it's another thing. All right, we have to here. If you're, mm. thank you so much for joining us. Of course, he's a lawyer. Uh, oh, my pleasure. And he, he is running off to the courts now. Yes. We have to leave him to go. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank to you, you very thank much you very for coming. Much. Thank you. Yes.